We're standing here on the banks of the River Mersey, just by Liverpool, to celebrate the 175th anniversary of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints arriving in the British Isles. But our story doesn't begin here. It actually began way across the ocean in Kirtland, Ohio. The prophet Joseph was in the temple there and spoke to a newly called apostle called Heber C. Kimball. And he told Heber that something new must be done for the salvation of the church. And that was this mission to England. So Heber felt quite overwhelmed by this call. When he was called as a modern day apostle, he felt a great burden come on his shoulders. But now to be put in charge of a mission, not only all the way across an ocean, but in a land that was known for its great eloquence and gifted intelligence. And he felt kind of not up to the, the call. But nonetheless, he was determined to fulfill what had been asked of him. And so he led six other men. They caught the boat in New York, arrived here in Liverpool. And of course, they were overjoyed to see the, the land once again. It took them 18 days to get over here, which is quite a fast crossing. But Heber got into the boat with three of the other missionaries. They sailed ashore and uh, he was so eager to get across that he leapt onto the shore. Um, just to one, probably overjoyed to get onto the land, but two, with excitement to represent the restored gospel in the whole of Britain. They wandered through the streets of Liverpool and were struck by the difference between wealth and poverty. Heber actually commented he had never seen such a wide distinction before in his life. They found lodgings with a widow who lived on Union Street here in Liverpool. And while there, they met in council together. And it was there that they then decided they would go to Preston as their first port of call. And they uh, then caught a horse and carriage up to Preston. And that's where they met up with Joseph Fielding's brother who had his own congregation there and basically opened the doorway for them to preach to the first British people. And from that congregation, they actually get the very first nine baptisms and uh, subsequently quite a few more of Reverend Fielding's congregation join as well. For those first three years, uh, we see about approximately one and a half to 2,000 members join the church. But then from 1840 onwards, we see a brand new missionary force come across with nine apostles. And then the membership of the church just flourished. And then Liverpool took on a whole new route. It wasn't just bringing missionaries in to, to spread the restored gospel. It was then the gateway to the new world, as thousands upon thousands of converts emigrated across to join with the rest of the church over in America. We see approximately 85,000 converts leave these shores, 90% of whom left from the docks in Liverpool. Liverpool then became the place, not only for emigration of all these converts, but also for missionaries to in and fro in, and also for printing. Liverpool became the printing press for the world. Poems, scriptures, uh, church magazines, uh, the Millennial Star church magazine that lasted for 130 years found its life in here and for about 91 years it was edited and printed here. Uh, it was also like a who's who of church leadership, church prophets like David O. McKay, Heber J. Grant, Joseph Fielding Smith, all who later became prophets of the church were serving here in the mission home, becoming the editors of that Millennial Star and, and also running the missionary program as well. It's really quite exciting as you stand by this river to consider the impact that these first missionaries had. They came here not really knowing where to go or what to do, but they had a faith. And with that faith from those first nine converts in Preston, the church just began to grow and grow and grow. So by 1851, there were 34,000 members here in Britain. But of course, in America, there were just 12,000. But this port then became the place to build the church in America. Thousands upon thousands left here, boat after boat, of converts to the church, to the restored gospel. It's really quite exciting to me as a member of the church to recognise the impact that Britain had as it built up the church in the States. You wouldn't think that an event that happened such a long time ago could have a, an impact on a family living in the 21st century. Um, my family were introduced to the church in 1965 and they were a direct result of all the missionary work that had gone on previously uh, from the 19th century. Elder Chamberlain, uh, with his companion in St George's Hall, Liverpool, found two scruffy kids who'd sneaked in thinking there was free food available, befriended us, asked us to can we come back to our home and meet our parents, which of course they did. Mum and Dad and six brothers and sisters later joined the church. 
why am I grateful for an event that happened 175 years ago? Well, my parents are now both passed away. I love them very much. And as far as this world is concerned, they're gone. But when the Prophet Joseph sent his brother Heber for the salvation of the British people, I wonder did he know that he would bring salvation for generations to come. I'm so very grateful that I have a family that's eternal, that I have a wife and a children that are precious and dear to me, and that I found a faith that actually means something, that answers my questions, that settles my soul, that gives me hope, purpose and joy. Only in Liverpool, this friendliest, happiest city, the best of people could welcome the missionaries and make their, their residence here, their stay here, such an eventful, happy and successful one. The last two weeks we've been celebrating the 175th anniversary of the arrival of the first Mormon missionaries to England. We have been in Liverpool where we've commemorated almost to the day the arrival of those seven missionaries, that little party of missionaries, and uh, we've remembered their faith and their courage in coming here and the way that they commenced this miraculous work, preaching the restored gospel in England. And then we've also been at Avonham Park on the banks of the Ribble, where we've remembered them moving from Liverpool to Preston and being greeted by the banner in Preston Election Day, Truth Will Prevail, and then the first baptisms and the foot race uh, by which uh, Brother Watt became the first convert, the first English convert uh, the missionaries had on, on their mission. And in, in essence, what we've, what we've been trying to do is to restate for ourselves and for everyone who will listen to us the very British nature of the history of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, beginning here in the northwest of England, in so many ways, the cradle of the Restoration. Those first missionaries and what they did here was not only open the door of salvation to the nation of England, but also they were bringing salvation to the mission of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They were, through their efforts, through the converts that flowed from England and from Scotland and Wales and from Ireland, through the port of Liverpool, back to North America, they were bringing the church the strength, the, the fresh blood, and the energy of the British converts upon whom the church was then built in so many ways. And from that valley and from the valleys of the Mountain West, the, the, those converts then returned to England and to other countries and their children and their children to the present day when the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is operating in just about every country in the world. But it all begins in a very real sense here in Liverpool at these docks and up in Preston on the banks of the Ribble with that foot race and that first baptism in, uh, in the Ribble. Uh, it's a great story and it's a story that we wish more people knew about in our own country uh, because it's a cause for celebration. It's a truly remarkable chapter in British history as well as in the history of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints.